our next uh, papers uh, are going to move us from the kind of purely art historical world into uh, the connection between the art historical world and digital humanities. We'll see what an, another generation of scholars can do with the same material. Our first uh, speakers will be Matilda Malaspina and Abhishek Dutta. Uh, Matilda is part of Christina's team, as we now call them, and Abhishek is part of the Visual Geometry Group at the University of Oxford. Their topic this morning is the use and reuse of printed illustrations in the 15th century Venetian editions. Thank you very much, Thank you very much Bill. Four years ago, in late September, I was about to begin my PhD at University of Oxford within the 15th century book trade project. Among other things, such as MEI, texting, my thesis, the position was aimed at exploring, in collaboration with the engineering science department, the application to 15th century printed Venetian illustration of an image matching software which had been recently tested to detect the reuse and copying of 17th century English ballads held in the Bodleian Library. The objective was to test an application which, if successful as hoped, could be easily extended to all illustration produced in Europe in the 15th century. This talk will be focusing on the 15th century illustration 15CI, a searchable database of 15th century printed illustrations developed by the 15th century book trade project in collaboration with the Visual Geometry Group of the Department of Engineering Science of University of Oxford. I think that we can now say that the test was successful. 15CI is the first comprehensive and systematic tool to track and investigate the production, use, circulation, and copy of woodblocks, iconographic subjects, artistic styles within 15th century printed editions. In order to demonstrate some of its key features and the theoretical work behind its development, Abhishek and I will focus today on different sorts of research questions which can now be addressed by scholars more quickly and precisely. The subjects and considerations expressed in the previous papers show that the presence or absence of woodcut illustrations in a given edition ought to be considered as relevant and meaningful as other concepts such as author, title, place of printing, layout, type, and all the standard references which we rely upon in defining the bibliographical identity of a book. This idea was the basis for the 15th century book trade work on printed illustrations in incunables, a work that began back in 2012 with a master thesis by Clementina Piazza. Since the official beginning of the project in 2014, we have kept working on the topic, developing a series of research questions such as how did printed images circulate in incunables? which were the different editions and texts within which they were printed, who were the printers who used them, is it possible to track the geographical movement of the blocks? How did printers use their images? How did they copy or how did they exchange them? How did they have them made? Which was the relationship between them and the designers or the woodcutters? And then questions about the iconographic tradition and the impact that the introduction of printing had on the representation of certain subjects. When we started thinking about these questions, the main issue that we came across was not necessarily the lack of data, but more the lack of a systematic approach to the existing data. In fact, several monumental repertoires were published in the last 150 years, which usually focus specifically on the production of early printed illustrated editions in a certain geographic area, such as works by Essling, Christeller, Schramm and Schreiber, and most recently by Ina Koch. And this brings me to the reasons why us as 15th century book trade always kept Venice as a starting point while trying to develop new ways to track the production and circulation of woodcut illustration in incunables. First, 
because of the active role that Venice and Venetian artists played in the design and making of woodcut illustrations, particularly, as already remarked by Lillian Armstrong, from the 1490s onwards. But also because for the Venetian production, the research on early printed illustrations already had a valuable theoretical framework, which is the work by the Prince of Esteling, specifically focused on illustrations printed in Venice up to the early 16th century. On Esteling and the importance of his work, you will hear more later from Ilenia and Ilaria. Here, let me only tell you that out of the around 31,000 editions recorded in ISCC today, a bit less than 4,000 were printed or attributed to Venice. Of this, around 400 are recorded in Esling's repertoire, and therefore can be considered as illustrated. I know these are provisional numbers, but might still give you an idea. The aim of the 15th century book trade project, anyway, has always been to develop a methodological approach and digital technologies which could support this research beyond specific geographical areas, bring together information of different kind and from different sources, and combine them with the data contained in the main tools for bibliographical cataloging, such as the ISTC. Over the last four years, we have created a consistent tool which allows scholars to search early printed images not only through their visual features, but also in combination with texts, text associated to them. The combination of these two technologies and two ways of considering images as visual and textual words brought us to the creation of 15th CI, 15th century illustration. For the time being, 15CI allows for three different searching options, which Abhishek and I will now illustrate starting from samples taken from my personal research within the project. In the Venetian production, along with the monumental frontispieces and beautiful editions of classical and liturgical texts just mentioned by Lillian Armstrong, containing long and fully developed programs of images, many were the editions of popular texts in vernacular, often in verses, which might contain only one or two illustrations. This is a copy, for instance, of the Historia della Regina Oliva, a poem in eight line stanzas composed toward the end of the 15th century by the Italian poet Francesco Corna da Soncino. The story tells about the adventure of the Roman emperor's daughter trying to escape from her father who loves her. Four incunable editions of this work survive from 15th century, all printed in Venice. Out of them, only this one is illustrated, printed by Johannes Baptista Sessa in 1500. If we look at the illustrations contained, one of them is just a border surrounding the frontispiece page. The second one, placed on the last leaf, below the colophon portrays a group of men in the act of discussing something. One of them is sitting on a throne, wearing a crown and holding a scepter. The one standing on his right side looks deformed in his face and touches his breast. On the right side of the image, a second scene is visible. A man is standing next to a coffin, holding a sword. A second man is sitting inside the coffin with half of his bust emerging and visible just in profile. The details of the scene depicted do not really correspond to any of those narrated in the book. So one might start asking who these characters actually were and where was this woodblock taken from? Um, the upload and search feature allows a researcher to check if an unidentified illustration appears in the 15CI database and to track its repeated occurrences in different 15th century printed editions. If a match is found, the scholar can view all the matches and their associated metadata. For example, ISTC and manually annotated regions. This can help track all the occurrences of that illustration in the 15th century printed editions. When we upload this unidentified image 
in the 15 CI and search the database, the search result shows all the other instances where the same wood block has been used, relying solely on the visual features of the image itself. In this case, we have three matches as shown on the bottom. Results can also be viewed as a list as shown on the right hand side of this screenshot. You must be curious about how this software is able to match a user uploaded illustration with hundreds of other illustrations in the database. Here is a quick description of how this is done. On the bottom left hand side of this slide is the query image, which is the unidentified image. And the bottom right hand side shows the mass illustration. Uh, for each image in the 15 CI database, this image matching software detects a set of regions that can be useful for matching. In the image above, uh, you will notice red elliptical lines which shows the regions detected in both the query and the match image. For each detected region, a compact feature, a compact vector of features is computed. This compact feature vector is a summary of the visual pattern that is present in the detected region. To find the illustration matching the query image, the image matching software finds correspondences between regions in the query image and the regions extracted from all the images present in the 15 CI database. This search for correspondence is based on the compact vector of features of each region and is nearly instantaneous because these features are transformed and stored in a data structure that allows fast comparison and retrieval. In the image above, the green lines show correspondences between the regions detected in the query shown in the top left and matched image shown on the top right. Thanks to the 15CI, we have discovered that the image which closes the Historia della Regina Oliva was extracted by the printer from a cycle of woodblocks devised in the early 1490s by Manfredo Bonelli to illustrate the 23 episodes of his Life of Aesop. In particular, the episode depicted here is that of the meeting between Esopo and Licurgo, and the scene portrayed on the side of the woodblock is that where Esopo is hidden in a coffin by his friend and Ali Hermippon after having been unjustly sentenced to death by Licurgo himself. Now, if we look at one of the images by Bonelli, which, we, which were already included in the database, we see that it is marked with a unique identifier and associated with two different sorts of metadata. The unique identifier is an alphanumeric sequence which brings together ICC number, MEI number of the copy portrayed in the picture, and foliation. From this simple sequence of numbers, it becomes immediately clear in which edition this image is found, in which copy of the edition, and where exactly in the copy. The metadata associated with the image are of two different sorts. There are bibliographic metadata automatically extracted from ISCC and concerning aspects such as author, title, format, place of printing, printer, and date of printing. And then there are descriptive metadata, which are assigned manually by scholars and describe the figurative and iconographic content using icon class language and keywords, as well as the artistic style, the type of woodcut, whether it is a border, a center, or a decorated initial, and transcribe the text cut in the image in case there is any. Uh, 15C illustration allows to search for illustrations using text keywords that match the bibliographic metadata associated with the ISTC number included in the unique identifier. For example, 
The following text search keywords, shown in the screenshot above, will show all the illustrations used in editions of Ethiopian texts printed in Venice. The ISTC field involved in this case are author and place of printing. At present, there are 445 illustrations matching this metadata search criteria, and this screenshot shows the first eight matching illustrations. Using the same interface, it is possible to search the database for descriptive annotations that have been assigned manually. For instance, if I search for angel, the search results will show all the illustrations which has been recognized by scholars as containing angel. We can also specify a more complex text metadata search criteria, which combines bibliographic and descriptive metadata. For example, we can search for all the printed illustrations containing angel and printed in Venice between the year 1491 and 1500. This text metadata search at present results in 38 matches and this screenshot shows the first 10 matches. But one's research can also start from a single edition and I might want to know where else the illustrations of that edition have been used and to illustrate which texts. In this case, one can search the database for the ISTC number of the selected edition. The 15CI will then present all the illustrations included in this edition grouped per gathering to ascertain whether the images appear in other editions as well one should just select one of them and define a query region shown here brighter in the picture and search the database for it. Searching for this image region results in four matches as shown in this screenshot. The query image region and its associated ISTC metadata is shown on the top the four matching regions are shown in the bottom. Clicking on one of these matches shows all the metadata associated with the image containing the matched region. The 15C illustration online database is created solely using open source softwares. The visual search feature is based on the VGG image search engine, which is an open source software created by the Visual Geometry Group. The open source license of this software entails the freedom to use and distribute this software for any purpose. The manual annotations of image regions used in 15CI is created using VGG image annotator, which is also an open source software and can be used for any other image annotation task. The 15CI can be publicly accessed using the website, at the website address shown here. This is an ongoing project and we welcome contributions in the form of images and metadata, but also of feedbacks and suggestions on how to improve it and make it always more useful to scholars. The 15th century book trade would like to acknowledge the efforts of all the libraries who have digitized their collections and made them publicly available online, or who have allowed members of the team to take photographs of illustrations which were not already available through digitized copies, and whose images have been used to test and implement the database. Among them, I would like to personally thank the Bodleian Library in Oxford, the British Library in London, the Huntington Library in San Marino, and the Fondazione Giorgio Cini in Venice. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Matilda and Abhishek. I, I feel a bit like the Wizard of Oz, where at one point um, the wizard says to Dorothy, pay no attention to the man behind the green curtain. I feel we've been taken behind the green curtain. Many of us will not understand how you do it, but are still in awe in the results. Thank you.